Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am getting quite the fan of the impromptu sewing video. I've had a super cute PR parcel from Liberty Quilting. I am also filming on my brand new camera, so I thought, let's just have a bit of an experiment with these fabrics and with some new footage and we'll see what we come out with. Welcome back if you're a subscriber, if you're new here, hi I'm Brogan, you might recognise me from series 8 of The Sewing Bee, but now I'm a social media content creator and I make videos all about sewing, fashion and all things crafty. I received these gorgeous fabrics from Liberty, I've never worked with their quilting cottons before but they sent me their brand new collection and some other very cute pastels. And I'm just feeling so inspired to make a really cute like shopper tote. I don't have a lot of casual bags that I can just you know throw under the pram and take out with me if I need a shopper bag. So I thought I might just create one and do it along with you. As usual I'm the queen of laid back tutorials so definitely follow along and sew with me but I am just working this out as I go along so I couldn't tell you what we're going to end up with but I can tell you it's going to be cute. So without further ado let's get sewing. So before we get started I just thought I'd give you a close up of the fabrics I received. So they sent over this gorgeous set, they're all pastels, this purple colour is just so beautiful and then this is their new collection so the classic liberty florals but oh, just look at these colors guys i just absolutely love them they're so nice however it was actually this mixed bundle that they sent over that has me feeling the most inspired and i went ahead and sort of put them in color scheme order so that they go all the way from sort of blues and greens i mean so cute and then these bright oranges and pinks they are giving me life so these are already pre-cut out which makes this a super quick sew for me so I'm gonna go ahead and put them out in some sort of order and then show you what I'm thinking I've gone ahead and laid out all my patchwork pieces for my bag so I'm thinking this might be the front and this the back but I'll see what I think when I put it together these came pre-cut for me but they are actually 12 centimetres by 12 centimetres. You could change that measurement if you wanted to, but I think these are actually a really nice, fairly large size patchwork piece. So I'm going to go ahead and sew all of these together. I've done one, two, three, four by one, two, three, four. However, for the very top row, I've actually cut each of my squares in half. So the bag will finish here. And I want this pattern to continue on just for a strip inside the lining. I'm going to cut out the lining in a bit when I know what size the bag is. As I said, this is very ex experimental. And then I've also cut out two of these gorgeous strips here and these will be my handles. So they are 7 centimeters wide and about 70 centimeters long. So let's head to the machine and start sewing these up. I'm at my machine, the best thing ever has happened and it is already threaded up in white. So I don't even have to go ahead and thread my machine. Obviously you want to pick a color that's gonna work for the maximum amount of your patches and white is always a good one. So I've grabbed my first row and so you will have your four squares and I'm just going to sew the side seams together. So I'm just grabbing my two first squares I'm going to pop them right sides together and then using a one centimeter seam allowance I'm going to sew these up. But I've gone ahead and sewn my first two pieces so you can see the seam is here. And to save some time, I'm not going to press all of these straight away. I'm going to sew the full row, do all of my rows, and then we can go ahead and press. So let's carry on and add these pieces onto my strip. That's me sewing my full first row together. So we can start to see a bit more of what the width of the bag will actually be like. I'm going to go ahead and do exactly the same for all of these strips, including my little mini ones. There'll be two skinnier strips. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh. 
all my pieces have been sewn into strips so I'm going to go ahead and plug in my iron and every time we have a seam we're going to press these bits open so they're laying nice and flat. I've got my iron so I'm just pressing out these seams now so they're laying nice and flat. It's going to make it a whole load easier for us when it comes to sewing the next lengthways seams. And I do like to do that from the back and also from the front so it's looking a little something like this. All my seams are pressed so it's looking a lot neater and flatter now and the next step is to do exactly the same as what we just did but this time we're sewing all the way along the lengthwise seams and the key here is to make sure that we are completely lining up these seams so that when they're sewn together they just run in a big continuous line. This can be quite tricky if you've not been super accurate with your seam allowance. I'm sure I'll be able to find an example of where I haven't been. So my motto is just don't worry. I mean, if we're the ones wearing these clothes, as long as we're happy with them, that's all that matters. I have plenty of pins here. First step, I'm going to take a row and flip it so that I've got right sides together. And then I'm going to take my pins and I'm really gonna try and find these seams and make sure that they are lying completely on top of each other. So once I'm happy that they're completely on top of each other, I'm gonna pop in a pin there and then we can do the same all the way along. Now you could do these one by one, but just as a bit of a time saver, I'm gonna go ahead and do all of mine at the same time. And then for my last row, I'm just taking one of my half length strips the other I'm going to save when I do the lining. Now we are going to take this to the machine now that we've got it all pinned up and sew those lengthways seams again with a one centimeter seam allowance like before. Guys, I'm so pleased with how this is looking. It's looking so cute and the colors are perfect. So let me show you what we've got so far. So both my front and back bag pieces are all sewn together. I went ahead and pressed all the seams so that they are facing up. And I just think it looks so cute. So I've got the strip on the top and then the other strip that I'm gonna use for the top of the lining. I did get these two model round, but I don't care enough to unpick it because that's just gonna be inside. So there we have it. Now you might want to think about the other things that you're going to want to add to the bag. So I've got this little trim that came with the PR package. This is the little trim that was wrapping up these little fabric squares and I think I'm actually going to use this as a feature on the front of the bag. You could use a label but I also think this is going to look super cute as a little makeshift label to put right in the center there. You've got to remember that we will be missing another one centimeter so I might actually center it just around here. So if you have a label you have in mind go ahead and do that. I'm going to pop mine right here. looking super cute on there. I love it. I actually had some scraps of cotton batting lying around. This is 100% um, cotton batting that I've used for previous quilted jackets and I actually had just enough to get the same two panels as the bag. So I've gone ahead and just 
pinned that to my batting and then cut it so it's the same size all the way around. I'm not going to quilt all of it. I just thought that it would be nice to add a little bit of an extra layer between the outer bag and the inner. If you wanted to, you could go down and along all of your seams and actually quilt the bag, which could look lovely. But I'm just gonna do um, a quick baste. I've also decided that I want a frill around the edge. So we'd already cut out these strips for the handles, but I do have this matching pink and I've gone ahead and cut out two strips for a frill. I double checked and I've done these 13 centimeters wide, but the actual frill will be half of that because we're gonna fold it in half. And obviously you'll have the seam allowance missing as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and baste my batting to my outer bag pieces, so both of these, and then we can prepare the frill. Go ahead and choose my baste setting, and I'm also gonna change it to medium woven because obviously we've got quite a few layers. Roughly basted that batting to our fabric just at 0.5 centimeters so it will fall within the seam allowance. You'll be pleased to know the frill is super easy so you should have two fairly long pieces for your frill. So the first thing we're going to do is pop them right sides together short ends together and just pop a pin in those because obviously we need to make them double the length so once you've pinned those in place like so we're going to sew our seam down the short end also at either short end so the ones that aren't attached to the seam we want to finish those edges because they're going to be visible on the bag so we're going to fold that in half right sides together and pin and once we've sewn that we'll be able to turn that edge out and it means that it's got a really nice clean edge i'm back at my iron now first thing i'm going to do is press that central seam the one that's literally right in the middle of our frill and i've just pressed that open and then on either end, we've got that fold now. So all you want to do is turn it out. You might need something pointy. This will work for me. And you just want to really press out that corner so that it's looking nice and sharp like so. And now you've got clean edges on your frill. I'll go back to my central seam. And now we're pressing it in half lengthways. I found my central seam and pressed this in half and pinned it. I'm going to carry on all the way along the length of my frill. I am literally obsessed with this pink colour. It's like the perfect candy pink. So what I'm going to do now is gather this up to make the frill all the way around the edge of the bag. So we are going to be sewing two gathering stitches pretty much as close as you can get to the edge and then one at just under one centimeter which will be our seam allowance and it's as easy as that. Now that I'm all the way at the end I'm going to leave a nice long tail of thread so there's our first row of gathering stitches there and we're going to do our second underneath just within one centimeters. Now that the frill is done, I've got my front bag piece, so the one with the label on, I'm going to place that flat down on my table and grab my frill. And we're going to want to find where our central seam is and line it up with the centre bottom of the bag. So it's actually quite nice because we've got a seam here. So I'm going to pin that in place. edge of the frill I am going to line up with I don't want it going all the way to the top of the bag you might want that that's absolutely fine but you'll just need to remember that we're going to have a one centimeter seam allowance here to attach the lining so you'd want to start that one centimeter from the top but I'm actually going to line it up with this seam here so we have a little panel without any frill I think that'll look really cute so I'm going to pop a pin there 
and then do the same on the other side. You want to make sure that you're not twisting your frill as you do this as well. There we go. And then now I'm just going to grab my gathering stitches. So you should have two tails at the front of your fabric that you can start pulling on and just feed those gathers down towards the central seam. This is the time consuming bit. I've gone halfway round my bag and pinned everything. So I thought I would show you how it's looking. Looking nice and even. The one thing you have to bear in mind is obviously we do have a corner here. So you don't actually want too many gathers at this corner point. And you want to make sure that they're lying really flat and away. When we put our pieces together, you don't want it being too bulky there. So I'm going to go ahead and do the second half to mat. Guys, I'm keeping it real with you. I just committed the ultimate gathering sin. And I was being a bit overzealous with my gathering and I snapped my stitches. So I've just had to go and re-sew some of them. But this is a reminder to you all that, especially with like a quilting cotton, which is a bit um like sturdier of a fabric, just be mindful that it actually doesn't take that much to snap your stitches. So don't pull too hard. Once that is all fully pinned down, we again are sticking with our long stitches on our machine. And we're just going to quickly baste around the edge to keep it all in place. You want to just make sure your gathers are laying nice and flat and all pointing down the way. We are getting there. You'll be pleased to know the straps are a super quick sew. All we need to do is take each strap piece and fold it in half so that we have right sides together. These are actually looking slightly thinner than I ideally would have wanted. So I'm going to go ahead and go in with a 0.5 centimeter seam allowance. We don't need to worry about the edges because they will be hidden inside the bag. Once you've sewn those straps, you're going to want to turn them out and then give them a press, which is what I've just done. And now we're going to base them to our front bag piece and also our back bag piece. So let's see where we want to put them. I've gone ahead and pinned the straps to the bag and I think it looks really nice lining up the edge of the strap here to where this seam is. So we've got two panels in the middle and then one either side. So I've done the same on the front and back and we can base those in place. Now that our straps are on, the very last bit to do is to make the lining and then put it all together. So for the lining, I've gone for the gorgeous purple colour. I'm loving the fact that I'm using like all the different colours of this stunning print. So the lining, I will put the dimensions in the description box down below, but it's essentially exactly the same size as these three patchwork pieces by four. And then we're going to take our other strips that we made and sew them onto the top exactly the same as we did here. So I've got my strip and I'm going to put it right sides together with my lining piece and pin that in place. This time we don't have to worry about matching those seams because obviously we've not got them in our lower lining. So because I'm actually loving this bag so much, I think it could be one that I want to take out as a little changing bag. So I went ahead and put in some pockets on my lining as well. It's difficult to see, but for the front lining, I did this smaller pocket. And then for the back, I went and did a larger pocket and then ran a seam down the middle. So it's got two separate compartments. So I could put like nappies on one side, wipes in the other. Again, I'll put the dimensions for those in the description box, but you could go all out with those. Do your own sizes, do these in alternating colours, whatever you think. Now we really are at the end of the bag, we can take both of our front bag pieces and join them up right sides together down the side, the bottom and to the top, leaving this bit here. And then we're going to do the same with our lining pieces. However, when we get to the bottom, we need to leave a gap of about two inches to turn it all out at the end. So we're going to go 
down this end and stop here and then restart here and up to the edge. I've pinned my lining pieces together and a quick reminder when you pin your front and back bag pieces is to just check that all your seams line up and also that your ruffle underneath is lying flat and it's not poking out this way, it should be enclosed in the bag. We're about to have a finished bag so here is my main bag piece. I can turn this right side out so we should start to see the frills, the handles, everything sat where it should be and then we also have the lining which is still right sides together. I'm placing the lining over the top of the bag and you also want the handles to go inside as well so none of the main bag is visible. Like so. So I'm matching my side seam and then I'm going all the way along the top and matching the seams of the patchwork. This is what it's looking like now that it's all pinned so we can't see the right side of the bag and we've pinned all the way along the top and our hole is at the bottom ready to pull it all through. <laughs> this is the really fun bit the bag is basically sewn now you need to go to the hole and really carefully start pulling your bag through it's like some crazy sewing magic trick but before you know it the bag will emerge before this it's just been looking really crazy <laughs> this could be really difficult <laughs> Here it is, the lining is completely through, so now you can just tuck the lining inside the bag. Yay! Time to give it a good press, a tidy up. You're going to want to find that hole that you made and either hand stitch or machine stitch it shut. So you just want to pop those seam allowances inside, hold it and stitch if it's on the machine. I'm going to go ahead and do that, tidy it all up and then we can have a look at the finished thing together. patchwork bag. I am over the moon with how this has turned out. Thank you so much for watching or sewing along with me. This was definitely one that I just experimented along the way. I'm so glad I went for the wadding because I think it just gives it that extra luxe feel. It's going to hold things better and I feel like this is going to be my go-to bag for going out with baby boy and putting all my bits in. It's just so fun! As always, I will put all the dimensions, the haberdashery that you need, everything like that in the description box. So you can head there if you want to have a go at this project yourself. And thank you so, so much for watching. I'll be back soon with another video and I will see you then. Bye!